Well, the Barbie movie's out now, so I thought what better excuse to sit down with one of the lesser thought of biggest gaming icons and play all of her games. All 56 games. It would have also made an every Christopher Nolan movie game ranked to coincide with Oppenheimer, which releases on the same day, but there's only one game and that's Batman Begins. I give that a six. So there you go, every Christopher Nolan game rated as well. Well, I figured I couldn't do a Barbie video without an actual Barbie fan and a little female perspective, which is why today I'm bringing on Barbie herself, aka Mrs. Odd. Mrs. Odd helps me out with basically every part of the channel except the voiceover, which changes today as we're going to dive into every single Barbie game. I've been so excited to do this video because it meant we got to play all the Barbie games, even though some are pretty bad. I did play some when I was younger, like Story Maker, but unfortunately, it doesn't count as a game. There's actually over 80 Barbie games, which is why we're only going to stick to home console and PC titles. Here's a quick list of titles we excluded from the list or otherwise we received a zero for not being a game at all. Barbie PC Fashion Design and Color, Barbie Story Maker, Barbie Print and Play, Barbie Fashion Designer, Barbie Magic Hair Styler, Talk With Me Barbie Doll and CD-ROM, Barbie Screen Styler, Barbie Photo Discovery Digital Camera CD-ROM, Barbie Jewelry Designer, Barbie Nail Designer, Working Woman Barbie, Sticker Designer, Digital Makeover, Barbie Beauty Styler, Barbie Beauty Boutique, Barbie Fashion Show, Digital Arts and Crafts Studio, Barbie Fairytopia, BarbieGirls.com Virtual World, Barbie Fashion Show and Eye for Style, Barbie Magical Fashion, Barbie Superstar Music Maker, Barbie Dreamtopia Magical Hair, Barbie Sparkle Blast, Barbie Dreamhouse Adventures, Barbie Vacation Adventures also discounted for never officially being released. All right, so that leaves us with 56 games. So we're gonna find out if there's at least one legitimately good one in any of this, or if we just submitted ourselves to an absolute torturous hell. Let's dive in. Barbie Horse Adventures, Blue Ribbon Race. The opening cutscene had some really spooky music as Barbie slowly inched her way across the screen, which seemed to be a clear hint that something was off with this one. When you hit the menu though, the game has some pretty chill ambient music that sounds nice, but could easily put you to sleep since it repeats through the entire game. But not before the game puts you to sleep. The game has the worst controls of any of these games. I guess they thought tank controls would be too complicated for a Barbie game, so instead we get something that doesn't work at all. The horse seems to auto move in whatever direction you point it and sometimes she just won't go where you tell her to. This game pissed me off so much that I threatened Odd with divorce if he made me play it any longer. Like how did anyone in their right mind think this game was fun? The game stops any momentum it has without explanation as apparently you have to get off your horse and walk it over bridges over and over even though this is never explained once. The spooky music just makes the game seem like you're in one of those dreams where you're trying to do a simple task on some electronic device like like sending a text from your phone, but none of the buttons work no matter how hard you try. Even the mini games are dumb, like the one where you stack rings that's the same concept as this iconic toy for infants. You know Blue Ribbon Race is at the very bottom of the barrel, when a quick round of horseshoes is the only highlight of the game. Kelly Club Game Boy Color version. I'm not judging this harshly because it's a game clearly made for little children, but because it's a game I'm sure children would have hated. All you do is repeatedly complete mini games featuring Barbie's youngest sister and her friends. And of all the games on this list, this game has by far the worst mini games. Some of the mini games I finished before I even figured out what the hell the objective was supposed to be. Then, the developers thought it would be a good idea to make you repeat these uninteresting games two more times. The children young enough to be amused by any any of these games would be too young for a Game Boy in the first place. The game commits an especially heinous act in the end, as after you collect all the tickets to a magic show in order to perform the tricks for your friends, the game requires that you randomly guess a four entry combination six times, which would be 144 possible combinations. I somehow knew even the magic show was going to be lame, but I didn't expect it to be as lame as it was. A better trick would be making this game disappear. And what do you get after getting all six codes correctly in a row? The credit screen. F this game. Fashion Pack Games. This is a rough one. First of all, for some reason, Barbie looks like she's strung out. This is probably the worst she looks in any of the games. Barbie looks like SpongeBob pretending he doesn't need water in Sandy's tree dome. I'm trying not to judge her on appearance, but I really think they could have benefited from better artists. It's a group of mini games that just really aren't great. It's as if the developers were like, just throw some lipstick in and they'll like it. One of the games is literally just shooting a shirt with a splatter of paint. And to make it worse, the games don't end. You get the option to continuously go on to the next level forever, or you can just put on the accessory that the game's centered around and see it on Barbie in the mirror. It should be called 
fashion pack hell. It was a missed opportunity not including this game in our seven video game discoveries from hell video. I assumed if I collected everything I would unlock something, but all I get is to see every item I got from each game in the mirror. And I've got to say, that's the worst outfit I've ever seen. gotta have games. As soon as we started playing this on the PlayStation, I thought it looked like a Game Boy game. And sure enough, it turned out to be a port of a Game Boy Advance game, but with even less content. It's just an obvious rehash of a previously released game that was already made up of knockoff games. Most of the mini games were pointless. Like this one, where you just have a few guesses to correctly guess a word, or you lose a horse race for some reason. What does this even have to do with Barbie? I will admit, I was briefly hooked on the Bust and Move clone. And Snake as a conga line, I guess, was a funny spin on a game I played on my dad's Nokia. This title embodies the exact kind of no substance cash grab that comes from a publisher thinking it will sell it either way just because it says Barbie on the cover. I would have been really excited to get this as a kid because it has Barbie on the cover. Then I would have begged my parents to return the game to the store to exchange it for literally anything else. Also, gotta have games is just a really stupid name. Barbie Horse Adventures Riding Camp Barbie Horse Adventures Riding Camp on DS is initially pretty impressive with its 3D horseback sequences. If you ever get to ride the damn horse, the game spends most of the time with Barbie at a horse ranch running back and forth doing chores like repairing holes in walls or washing this horse's ass for an excruciating amount of time. Who the hell makes a horse riding game where the focus is boring chores and dumb mini games? At least in Blue Ribbon Race, we actually got to ride the horses. It makes me think that poor Barbie fell victim to a scam where they lure campers in just to get free labor. It's not even worth grinding through washing the horse's ass because when we get to ride the horse, these segments are painfully short. But even that turns out to be a slog as the horse goes incredibly slow and there's hardly anything to do on the trails. Guess it's time to go back to washing this horse's ass. Barbie Groovy Games. The irony of Barbie Gotta Have Games on the PlayStation being a lazy and worse port of this game is that Barbie Groovy Games wasn't any good to begin with. It appears to have two games that Gotta Have Games doesn't have, but unfortunately those two are even more basic than the rest of the Game Design 101 games that make up the title. Perhaps the people who made this game just didn't know what groovy meant and confused it for the word boring. Although I didn't understand what the hell the objective was supposed to be in one of the games where we're supposed to be picking up jewelry and putting it down for some reason. I at least understood the point of the other games, which is not something I can say for many of the other minigame collections on this list. The only reason to give this more points than the PlayStation 1 spinoff is that it's a handheld title, and knockoffs of classics like Bust and Move work a lot better on the go. The only problem is that this one lacks a Tetris clone. Considering that you could have played better Flash games for free on BarbieGirls.com at the time, it really doesn't make any sense that they expected anyone to pay money for this. Barbie Jet Set in Style. I initially thought this wasn't too bad with the motion controls as they seemed to simulate the experience of being a stylist pretty realistically, which I think young girls would have had a lot of fun with with the Wiimotes. The problem is you endlessly do the same three actions over and over, with some small unlockable additions like painting nails. You have to do this so many times to get to different locations, but all the games take place inside of Barbie's hair salon slash private jet anyway. Barbie pulls a Taylor Swift, polluting the air in the name of style. Despite its stupid premise, the game would have been more fun if it allowed more customization options and different motion controls based on the options chosen. Decent motion controls, but probably the most repetitive game on this list. Barbie, Commodore 64. This game took forever to load, and from what I read, that's pretty much to be expected with a Commodore 64 game. Once it is finally loaded, the game is an interesting novel for being the first Barbie game ever, and it definitely shows. It's crazy this was called Realistic Audio in 1984, though it is impressive there is an actual voiceover at the beginning. That was insanely hard to hear. Barbie, if Ken, would you like to go to the pool? I don't know if we were having issues or if hearing Ken is part of the challenge. Barbie also has the least amount of agency in this game than any of the other titles, and was even torn to pieces back in 1984 in the only archive review of the game I could find for being misogynist. And I can see where they're coming from, as the whole game has you randomly guess the correct outfit to buy on your way to meet Ken for a date. And if you don't put on the exact outfit Ken wants Barbie to wear, he abandons her ass to hang out with the boys, or whatever he'd rather do than be seen with Barbie. Barbie and her choice of wardrobe. The whole thing is about please
pleasing Ken and his preferences, which is kind of a weird focus for a Barbie game. The reward for Barbie driving around town to buy the right outfit and shoes for Ken's plans is the man himself informing us there's been a change of plans, inviting us somewhere completely different, and you will have to go out on the town to gather your outfit pieces all over again, just for Ken to keep flaking out. Perhaps Ken wouldn't be so wishy-washy with the plans if he knew what we had to go through to get each outfit, as the sound effect that plays during the driving parts is horrible, and the loading screens in between locations are nearly as long as the game itself. <laughs> Ken, I'll go to the pool myself if I have to because I went through hell and back just to get this outfit. With the only reward being a photo of Ken and Barbie's date, I highly doubt any kids would have stuck around after all this endless loading. Barbie of Swan Lake, the Enchanted Forest. Off the bat, we open on this remarkably unlikable unicorn character, Lila, who's explicitly told she shouldn't be in the castle without Barbie, and after she insists she'll be careful, she immediately knocks something over within two seconds and kills the entire forest. Way to go, Lila. The first challenge is to rescue Lila's ass so she can get across the water, while Lila complains the whole time even though she started this whole mess to begin with. The challenge is virtually non-existent, as you bring color back to the screen by dragging a wand or laying out different objects. The enchanted forest does indeed look magical, so young players will enjoy the cute mini-games in using the wands to bring magic back to the forest but only if they don't get bored by the repetitiveness of the game first or want to kill Lila. While she was tolerable in the movie Barbie of Swan Lake, for some reason the game amps up her antics and uses a different voice actor who makes Lila's voice ten times more annoying. Thanks! I was getting lonely out here! It really bothered me that the end payoff for bringing the magic back to the forest was supposed to be a picnic which you never actually get to see after dressing up and customizing the screen. So we basically put up with that annoying ass unicorn for nothing. The game really expects you to have already lost interest at this point in hopes that you just moved on. Barbie, Ness and Doss versions. I had high hopes for this one because I heard it wasn't bad for a Barbie game, but it's pretty bad. The game begins with Barbie lying in bed thinking of what she's going to do tomorrow, which seems to be an excuse to say the game uses dream logic, considering nothing makes any damn sense after that. The game becomes a nightmare of random objects flying in every direction trying to kill Barbie, while Barbie can throw a selection of three random objects at animals to advance through the environment. This game is dumb. I'm not sure how anyone was supposed to figure out any of these objectives, like throwing a random object to this cat four different times in order to get to the next level. I also didn't like how each level was pretty much the same, just reskinned with different wallpaper. None of the environments make any sense either. Not only does it not make sense, it's extremely difficult. Switching between your projectiles and getting them to land with pixel perfect accuracy while dodging countless objects at the same time without any pattern feels damn near impossible. It will instantly deplete your health and make you restart from the beginning. Come on! It's cool they made an actual platform out of Barbie, but this is like the Dark Souls of Barbie. Most Barbie games could use more challenge for sure, but not this much challenge. Kelly Club PC version. PC version isn't as bad as the Game Boy version. It has some decent mini games featuring Barbie's youngest sister's friends. It's not outright horrible in any way, but it's pretty dull. The mini games are overwhelmingly cute and wholesome, like rescuing baby animals. And I can see young players being entertained by them, but only if they are as young as Kelly themselves. There are only about five games, and while there was nothing wrong with any of them, the whole thing took about 10 minutes, making it one of the shortest games we played. I get that children have small attention spans, but surely they would have liked to play something a little longer than this. As someone who was playing Super Mario Bros. when I was four, I know I would have been disappointed. It also really bugged me that during the sledding game, Kelly calls the sled a toboggan for some reason. Why couldn't they just call it a sled? Use your mouse to guide us down the hill on our toboggan. Boy, you are good at steering this toboggan. Generation Girl, Gotta Groove. This game is cool in that Barbie goes to an international school in New York City. So her friends from all over the world who each have their own style of dance and music can teach each other some new moves and swap outfits. It took me a minute to realize this game was entirely capitalizing on Spice Girl's late 90s popularity. With the title Generation Girl even being a reference to the girl power movement in the 90s that the Spice Girls brought into prominence. The game's actually very similar to the Spice Girls movie in that there's no substance and nothing worthwhile happens at all. The characters are kind of cool carbon copies of each of the Spice Girls and while I think the Spice Girls are cool, there's really nothing cool about this game. Pretty much all you do is make the girls dance together. It almost doesn't qualify as a game, but there is at least one mini game that presented some challenge. Otherwise, you're just customizing some stuff before you hit the stage and what the hell is this? 
you can put on a show as the ultimate finale, which turns out to be rather disappointing. As only two girls can perform at a time, you can use only one special effect at a time, and you see the whole show through this rather awkward free camera mode that's so hard to control you're watching the floor most of the time. For some reason, when we played the game, the music refused to load during this part, and while we did hear what sounded like some good attempts at ripping off the Spice Girls through the rest of the game, hearing the music here probably wouldn't have made this any less awkward. Barbie Super Sports Imagine Barbie shredding the streets, competing in the X Games, and then landing a starring role in her own Jackass-inspired TV show, because that would be an awesome game. This game, however, is not that at all. I thought Barbie was going to play a number of extreme sports, but you only get to snowboard and inline rollerblade. Super Sports is more like satisfactory sports, as it's more of a collect-a-thon. The levels are monotonous while the goals are overly simple and have nothing to do with sports. At least Mari will automatically do a trick when you get air on the snowboard, which is cool the first time, but she does the same trick over and over and you can't control her in the air. The only positive during the snowboarding really is the late 90s house track. The rollerblading is more fun with a funkier song and faster speed, and the ability to at least grind a rail or two, which for some reason is insanely difficult to pull off. I never once figured out how to grind consistently, and the long plays I watched seem to have the same issue. Of of course, since it's a Barbie game, they make us change our outfit before we can do anything. It even includes the dreaded line, Shopping is so much fun. More effort went into creating the different outfits than the tricks or the courses. And most of the outfits are just a clash of patterns that don't even look that good. What's the point of making an extreme sports game where the primary focus is tacky outfits? Shopping is so much fun. Barbie Pet Rescue. Game Boy Color version. This is a more boring Game Boy Color version of PC game by the same name, where Barbie runs an animal care facility constantly racing to different locations to rescue critters, complete with driving sequences where Barbie can make her entire vehicle jump. She really can do everything. Challenge in finding the animal is basically non-existent. Seriously, this guy was sitting at my feet the moment I got there. Take the animal back and you complete a number of extremely similar tasks before the animal is ready to be driven back and you're given a certificate. It feels nice with the driving and the simulation mechanics the first couple of times, but there's really no variety, making the whole thing a very repetitive gameplay loop that you do 14 times the same way until you get a pretty lackluster ending. It really bugs me that they make you complete the same three mini games to keep each of your animals healthy. So whether you rescued a pony, turtle, koala, etc., you are still using the same paws to bat this ball of yarn back and forth the kitten. Who do these mysterious paws belong to? Clearly not the animal I just rescued. It was a snake. Barbie Dream House Party. Dream House Party takes the web series Barbie Life in the Dream House and turns it into a Mario Party style four player game. And it works pretty well. Life in the Dream House was a comedy web series from the 2010s, also on Netflix, that often poked fun at the Barbie characters and was pretty funny. And getting that version here is certainly refreshing because it's a Barbie game with some actual character and humor. Despite this, even though there's about 10 rooms to compete in, there's only like five games altogether. The game is initially exciting because you're in Barbie's dream house, but that excitement only lasted about 10 minutes once I figured out we were playing the same Find the Object game in each level. The key to a party game should be, you know, making it feel like a party, not making it feel like a game of where did I put the remote. The other mini games thrown in were also uneventful, such as this game that just has you putting on jewelry in the assigned color. Though the sound effect of their high heels hitting the floor is pretty nice. Barbie as Princess Bride. The animation designs are kind of impressive, and there's a solid number of objectives and games to complete before Prince Ken arrives from his long adventure on the water, which is probably where a better game could have taken place. The story here is lame as Ken arrives and Barbie agrees to get married, with absolutely no conflict or story beats to keep anyone attached at any age. The music in this one I thought was awful, especially because of the unnecessary musical numbers. They're not the worst thing I ever heard, but they're not good, and they go on way too long in an attempt to seemingly pad out the game without, you know, making more actual game. Well, where are you now? Where could you be? The songs definitely brought this game down at least a point or two for me. I could see myself enjoying these activities as a kid, but Princess Barbie seems pretty delusional. Handing out wedding invitations to woodland animals and thinking that this wedding cake in the shape of a boat looks good. <laughs> yes, during the cake decorating game, your only option is this tacky boat-shaped cake. 
also have to take points away for one big issue. According to the Barbie canon, she never gets married. Partly because Mattel wants every doll owner to decide for themselves Barbie's future. And also because of the toy company's belief that if Barbie were to marry and have kids, children would start to see her as boring. This is probably why Barbie's wedding isn't actually shown in the game. Which I was actually disappointed that I didn't get to see. Because I wanted to see Ken's reaction to the awful cake. And also how inviting only animals to the wedding turned out. Barbie grooming glam pups. I can see how this game would fare well with dog-loving Barbie fans. It definitely captures the experience of being someone who takes dog fashion way too seriously. You do get to make the dogs look absolutely ridiculous, and I appreciate the developers had a little bit of a sense of humor with it. The game itself works pretty nice as you move the Wii Remote in lots of different ways to mimic caring for the dog and teaching them tricks. There's lots of tricks to unlock and the game finishes when you unlock them all, but again it's a crazy stretched out gameplay loop as you teach a dog a trick, do it again on stage, and then repeat that about 20 more times. I enjoyed seeing the dogs go out on the runway to perform tricks I taught them, and getting to make fun of the NPCs in the audience. Who would actually attend a show just to watch a dog do this? I really hope they didn't pay money to see this. The runway event has you help your dog do the tricks with the Wiimote, but the dance event is just a cutscene that you watch after putting together the routine, which takes away from the interactivity of this game. The Wii remotes make it fun enough for a couple of minutes, but I'm not sure if the girls would have played this for hours looking at the same two locations over and over just to see a video game dog do a new type of backflip. Barbie as Sleeping Beauty. The artwork and animation of this game was good with solid voice acting and strong Disney quality. Unfortunately, the opening is longer than the game itself. There isn't much to this game, but that is to be expected, as it says the game is for ages 4 and up. I can see 4 year olds really enjoying the simple story, pretty princess, and amusing mini games. The and up? Not so much. The final scene was kind of a fun change up to stop the attacks of the evil fairy. Even though it lasted all of five seconds, Barbie confronts her in the final scene, telling her she likes her even though she's mean. Which apparently was all Barbie had to do as it instantly transforms her. Rose, you set me free. Thank you. Barbie Explorer. For some reason, a few people online seemed to like this game, so maybe my expectations were high, but I thought this game was a complete pain in the ass. I give it a lot of points for being the most authentic 3D platformer of any of these games. It certainly doesn't hold back trying to knock off Crash Bandicoot in every possible way. The original Crash Bandicoot 2 was my favorite game when I was a kid, and that game got me into gaming. So while this seems like the perfect framework for a Barbie game, this is in no way comparable. It feels impossible with what are probably the most unpredictable controls I've ever played in a platformer. I couldn't figure out what would make Barbie suddenly jump far enough over a pit, how to cross over a bridge without dying, how to jump forward without jumping up straight, or how to climb over obstacles without hitting buttons at least 20 times. Just getting Barbie into an angle that could help you make a jump is a no-go. I was frustrated to find myself clearing difficult jumps, but then still dying because Barbie clipped through the floor. This game isn't fair! And we were playing on easy mode. There's also medium and hard difficulty levels that I don't even want to think about. This part with Tornado was probably when I was the most frustrated with any of these games. It moves like two inches to the left and right and has an enormous hitbox that I could find no way to infiltrate. And when you lose all your lives, you go back to the main menu with all your progress lost. Why is it so unreasonably difficult? If I'm getting this frustrated, I have no idea how this was supposed to be fun for kids. Barbie Supermodel. Barbie Supermodel seems to get a lot of things right in terms of what I'd expect for a Barbie game. I didn't know until making this video that Barbie originally was solely a 19 year old supermodel. And this game does a decent job of capturing what it'd be like to be a superstar teenage girl living in Hollywood. As the game starts with Barbie cruising in her pink convertible down the sunset strip of her hair blowing in the wind. It's a young and carefree vibe with some impressive graphics and sound for a 93 game. Though Barbie might be a little too carefree as she jeopardizes multiple lives ignoring every traffic law possible as she speeds recklessly to get home and practice her moves. Along the way, Barbie collects random sh** playing in the street, which gives you different types of minigames. It's minigame padding like all of these games have. Once you get to your house, you practice a few moves and then speed it all the way back to repeat it again on stage. It works, and once you do that, the whole thing is repeated several times, but with Barbie's license seemingly taken away, as now she'll be on skates at the beach, walking in the snow, and riding a bike. Why doesn't Barbie just practice her runway walk in the same location where her fashion show takes place? Probably because, without this stupid premise, we wouldn't have the only challenge in this game, getting back and 
forth to each location as people randomly throw projectiles at Barbie. The beach has that early 90s aesthetic, and the bike sequence, I just thought the song was good. I know for sure because I was able to get through it multiple times because I just wanted to hear more of this beat. Damn! Kelly Club Pet Parade This game is essentially the same as the original Kelly Club, but improved in every way. Instead of just playing five make-believe minigames, we design a parade float for each of the children. It's still not good, but I can at least give it points for improving on the original. I was so excited for this game because parades are one of my favorite things. I was not disappointed, as most of the game is completing some simple minigames to get Kelly and her three friends ready for their pet parade. The minigames are fun enough to keep young kids happy, but the best part of the game is how much customization the game allows in decorating. It is one I can say we did derive a lot of entertainment from. Designing the parade allows the player to go pretty crazy, and challenging ourselves to make the costumes as ludicrous as possible was probably one of the hardest times we've laughed during any of these games. The ending where you get to watch your parade in action is totally worth it. I was so excited decided to watch Kelly and her friends parade across the screen looking like they were tripping balls at Coachella. In fact, this is how my sister and I played most Barbie games. While we may not have known what tripping balls meant, we were always trying to make Barbie look as dumb as possible. That's why I really give props to games like Pet Parade that allow for endless customization, because limited options tend to mean limited fun. Barbie as the Island Princess, Game Boy Advance and DS version. The handheld ports of Island Princess include 12 dumbed-down versions of the 28 minigames that make up the PS2 and PC releases. The games are single-player versions where you're not playing against the game's AI, which made the games less enjoyable for me as there was less urgency in completing the activities because I wasn't racing to beat another character. The handheld version of Barbie as the Island Princess is essentially the same game as its console counterpart, but has way less games and way worse cutscenes, making it even harder to understand what the hell's going on during all the random scenes from the movie that don't make any sense in the first place. Because of this, I was basically doing random minigames was able to beat well before the timer was over without ever knowing why I was doing them, which I guess was at least better than some of the other no explanation random minigame collections. Barbie Magic Genie Adventure Barbie Magic Genie Adventure initially had a lot going for it. With cool visuals and fun gameplays, you float around some interesting environments across the world and search for magic lamps that were stolen from you and your friends. After the villain takes the lamps and you beat the first level, he's like, whoa, wait a second, what am I supposed to do with these? I can't even use them. And then hides them across the world. Guess he didn't think about that beforehand. So what was the point of stealing them? Just to piss off Barbie? In a Barbie game, that's not a good idea. Barbie looks so cute as a genie, so I was really excited for this game. The environments didn't disappoint, and it is also really fun to fly around on the magic carpet. Other than that, the game is just endless flying through maze-like levels to try to find the items you need. There's no challenge or puzzles to make this game interesting. I guess you could call it a magic carpet flight simulator. The game's fun, but then settles into a repetitive gameplay loop where you have to find someone, complete a decent-ish minigame, who in turn gives you a ring that provides you access to the lamp area, which can be found at the end of a maze. You do that about four times, and then you get a cutscene where the genius curse the villain to make him laugh for the rest of his life, which is kind of lame when all I want to see is him get his ass whooped for making us go on this pointless adventure. Mermaid Adventure Barbie Mermaid Adventure isn't great, but is maybe the most easygoing game ever, as you just sit back and listen to calming music with appropriate under-the-sea vibes. Basically, you float around the ocean complete some nicely executed minigames without a single glimpse of challenge in sight as you find different sea creatures to join you for a party. If there's a Barbie game that was sure not to give you a bad trip on drugs, I'd have to give it to Mermaid Adventure. I really love the character design on Mermaid Barbie. Of all the mermaid media I consumed as a kid, this Barbie mermaid definitely would have been the most majestic. The buzz is only killed by the crying baby minigame. The vibe saved at the end was a jazz band whose song you get to customize for the party. The tunes are lit. While the atmosphere, graphics, and overall vibe of this title are solid, it barely skirts the line between being a game and an interactive Windows 98 screensaver. There's also nothing I love more than some smooth jazz, and these sea critters sure can jam. Barbie Horse Adventures Wild Horse Rescue I remember as a kid when this came out, Gaming Press slammed it for being one of the worst games of all time. Clearly they didn't play the 24 other games on this list. 
so it's definitely not the worst. It's of course by no means a good game either, but it's not that bad. This game was the console attempt for the normally PC horse riding games as you traverse long environments avoiding skunks and bears from scaring your horse as you collect wild horses across different trails. Another pretty easy going affair with some nice moments. The levels though are ridiculously long and the majority of the time you're running to a ridiculously placed wild horse where Barbie has to dismount and slowly traverse the environment to retrieve it and guide it to another location. Then she has to backtrack to her original horse and you repeat this about six times in every environment. It really bugged me that every time we found baby horse, Barbie would call Teresa and tell her the same thing. And we couldn't skip this cutscene. So we just had to keep hearing the same thing and doing the same thing over and over. Although some of these horses ended up in some pretty strange places. So there is at least some variety in solving some puzzles on how to get the horse. Finding the adult wild horse at the end of the levels was pretty fun and badass, as Barbie has to get out her lasso and chase them down. Yet, with the very long and padded levels, if you're playing just for that part, you'll probably get bored in between. The races in between are fun, but overall this game is unnecessarily stretched out to the point of exhaustion, and nothing exciting ever happens during those long stretches of time. Barbie Magic Fairy Tales, Barbie as Rapunzel. At first it just seemed like we were clicking on random objects in the room and then pressing the green arrow to advance the story. This was the case for a while until it ended up giving Barbie more agency, with a couple of moments that let you branch off to collect something from a dragon or the local townsfolk. Of course that lasts all of 15 minutes before the final conclusion where you take down the witch with a pretty simple plan that takes about 3 minutes. That said, art's nice, voice acting solid, and it's an actual story with separate acts. While the game has more story and puzzles than the other storybook titles, far less work went into the animations, with many scenes just being static pictures rather than being fully animated all the way through. I'm also taking points off because Rapunzel's dress is ugly. This is a Barbie title after all, where fashion is of the utmost importance. But I'm adding points because the story gives Barbie more agency than most other princess stories, as she is the one who has to save the prince at the end before they stop the evil witch together. Most girls probably would have rather played a full or point and click adventure, as I think even a four year old would have wished for more challenge after the story was over. Barbie Beach Vacation. This game is pretty chill. A lot of the water sports are basic, but the scuba diving section was nice. There's a nice variety of things to do, like building sand castles and dancing, all set to pretty nice music. The underwater segments are pretty cool and immersive. Barbie can also surf and jet ski, and while you still can't control her in the air, she does have more than one trick, making this game far more robust than super sports. The game ends with you being able to customize a party, and I think for the most part, girls would have been happy with this one despite it's only one hour. Also, Ken for some reason looks creepy as hell. Barbie and her sisters, Puppy Rescue. The last Barbie console title, Puppy Rescue, at first appears to be an open world Barbie game, but you're quickly going to find yourself wanting to get out of that open world after you're driven crazy by the same bubbly 30 second loop. The whole game is one endless loop as you run around aimlessly in the hard to navigate mm. world before you're interrupted by mm. your crazy loud cell phone, which made our whole house shake on the surround sound. Each caller asked Barbie to find a loose animal, leading to one of like five spots where the dumb canine got stuck this time. Once there, you're tasked with a challenge free mini game so you can take them back to the shelter. The shelter is where I give the game some points, where it becomes more of a pet simulator. It's basic, mostly made of quick time events and simple mini games, but you do get a sense of caring for dogs that I could see appealing to younger players. After a few activities, you give the dog up for adoption and repeat the whole thing. This is the only Barbie game that features all three of her sisters. And unfortunately, that's the only good thing I can say about it. All of the puppies allegedly rescued already have a collar, which brings up my biggest question I had with this game. Are Barbie and her sisters actually rescuing the animals or dog napping them? I'm starting to think this puppy rescue center is actually a money laundering front. Unfortunately, every dog looks the same, reskinned with a different color, giving kids even less reason to do the same task over and over over until the repetitive looping 30 second tune finally makes them snap and go on a violent rampage. The Barbie Diaries High School Mystery Game Boy Advance version. The Barbie Diaries High School Mystery on Game Boy Advance is a lesser version of its Windows counterpart, but it has its own story from the game and apparently the movie according to Mrs. Ott. This game has you collecting lost charity auction items that have been hidden across the school with the help of an unknown admirer. It was a slog to be honest. Going back and forth through this extraordinarily large school just to continuously find an item, take it back to the lab, try to figure out where the next item would be, find it, and bring it back to the lab again. Sometimes while dodging a food fight or soccer balls from the soccer team who apparently 
determined to pelt Barbie in the head. Is this a high school mystery or a walking simulator? I think it's dumb that Barbie's secret admirer is a different character than in the movie or the PC game. And it's a character who barely even shows up in this game. It leaves me wondering what the point of that change was. Perhaps the developers just wanted to see Barbie end up with the mysterious hottie rather than the nerdy dude. The ending was okay, but it was ultimately just a lot of endless walking back and forth. Barbie as Rapunzel Creative Adventure Barbie as Rapunzel Creative Adventure is very similar to Barbie as Swan Lake, thankfully without the horribly annoying Lila. Instead of a talking purple unicorn, this time we get the talking dragon Penelope, who's actually kind of cute and isn't responsible for all the game's problems. In this game, you're restoring color to your kingdom as the witch who's been imprisoned in the tower after the events of the original story has cursed the kingdom from afar and turned Ken into stone, with Barbie now having to use her magical paintbrush. Despite each area having the same objective, there are enough customization options to make the game pretty fun as I got so involved decorating and making my castle look badass that I forgot I was being asked to do the same thing over and over again. The biggest problem for me with Enchanted Forest besides Lila was this complete lack of an ending with the game just stopping with no real conclusion. Rapunzel actually has a brief 3D maze at the end and a full rewarding cutscene seeing Ken freed from being frozen. It's far more rewarding than Enchanted Forest which is even crazier considering this game came out a year before. I like the ending because Barbie saves the prince herself similar to how she saves the prince in the other Barbie as Rapunzel game. Reminding me that Barbie was a couple decades before her time, having princesses save themselves before Disney started pumping out endless live action remakes in order to do so. Barbie and Her Magical House Barbie and Her Magical House is heavy on the early 90s nostalgia. Just from the way Barbie's dressed, she looks cool yet dated as f which is basically the vibe of this game. This is a lot more inherently fun than the previous titles. Essentially, all you do is explore Barbie's literal magic house, where in familiar humongous entertainment fashion, you can click on nearly any detail and reveal a fun and sometimes funny animation, with the occasional easy as hell minigame along the way. That's basically it. This game is probably the closest simulation of what it'd be like if Barbie took acid while crawling around her house. Unfortunately, it's a rather short trip, as the game's only about 20 minutes long, but it was definitely fun finding all the secrets in the environment. I played this game as a kid, and I remember the trip being a lot longer than 20 minutes. The game entertained my friend and I for hours one day when we were about 10, cooking through the different rooms and making fun of Barbie. Playing this game now, I don't feel like I have to make fun of Barbie in order to enjoy this game. It's pretty chill clicking on the household item to see which ones will reward you with some random animation. It also has one of my favorite moments from a Barbie game, where clicking on this fruit makes it dance and then say, I'm gonna get back up there before Barbie catches us. I think I know why my friend got out the game when I came over her house all those years ago. She actually enjoyed the game. Barbie as the Princess and the Popper. PC version. The Princess and the Popper movie was lauded by critics such as the Star Tribune for being a scathing indictment of the inequities of the feudal system and the citizen came to the children's film genre. I'm not even kidding. While I've never seen the film, unlike Mrs. Odd who considers it a favorite, I can safely say the PC game doesn't say anything about class power imbalances or why Princess and the Popper is a good movie. The game takes place after the animated feature where the Popper Erica, now turned princess, has to complete tasks in order to gain true royal status. As for some reason you can't become a princess unless you run a delivery service for all the local townsfolk. It doesn't make any sense, though the level of quality and execution on everything was a step above the previous titles on this list, feeling like a real animated adventure game. I give it points for being an actual game, but the game got old once I realized it was just a fetch quest. This would have been okay for one level, but having most of the two-hour game consist of royalty doing chores for the common folk gets boring as quickly as it sounds, and seems to defeat the purpose of a princess game. Who decided to make Erica all of the NPC's task rabbit. Nothing happens for a good couple of hours of this girl taking forever to walk across the game world while completing a bunch of meaningless errands. The insignificant cutscene at the end isn't worth all the endless chores, and I can't imagine this one holding many girls' attention all the way to the end. Barbie as the Island Princess PC, Wii, and PlayStation 2 version. My first question is who's the monkey mutant thing, the creepy talking elephant, and the unbearably annoying peacock talking to Barbie? Of course, none of this was explained as the game expects you to watch the tie-in movie, which based on the scenes shown here, I think I'm gonna pass. Perhaps we're related. 
Despite the out of context cutscene still not explaining anything, there's more of a direction than the handheld version as you complete a choice of several mini games to advance from the island to the boat to the city to the palace, each ready with more mini games to compete against the AI. It's a mini game collection, but at least some of the mini games are pretty fun, such as this one where you have to sneak into a palace past the guards for no given reason, which vaguely feels like Metal Gear Barbie. There's a lot of variety to these mini games, and some are pretty challenging, so I can see young players spending hours with this game and enjoying it, though they may have also gotten easily frustrated by the AI that's just too intelligent. AI seems to be able to unfairly advance in games without the same strains as the player. That said, there's enough challenge and content here that I could see young girls feeling satisfied with this as a game that they could return to or play with their friends. The final reward is the ending scene from the movie, where again none of the characters we were ever introduced to sing a horrible song that seems barely in harmony and completely out of tune. I'd rather I didn't unlock anything at all. Adventures with Barbie, Ocean Discovery, Game Boy Color version. Ocean Discovery is visually impressive for a Game Boy Color title, and the vibes are chill as you float around exploring the ocean without any danger in sight. Very similar to Mermaid Adventure, but not as relaxing. Barbie explores multiple environments under the sea to complete different minigames hidden in each environment, which are nicely designed, although they can be unforgivingly hard even with unlimited chances. There are some good moments here as you try to uncover a treasure. This point and click moment where you drag the key into the statue to unlock the gate was pretty cool for a Game Boy color game, and I wish the game was more like that. Weirdly, when we beat the game, it seemed a soft log. We confirmed multiple times we unlocked everything by going back and doing it all again, even referencing multiple playthroughs, and nothing happened after we beat everything multiple times. We weren't the only ones who ran into this, but the playthrough I saw where it did work for someone, the ending wasn't worth it anyway. Barbie finds the treasure, and that's it. The process of finding the hidden treasure is pretty rewarding, as you swim around the ocean trying to locate the missing pieces you need. I feel that the game would have been more fun and provided more replay value if there was more going on during the swimming parts, like a maze or avoiding enemies. But that would take away the chill vibes of this game, which is what I think the point of many Barbie games is. Adventures with Barbie Ocean Discovery PC version Ocean Discovery on PC is better than its Game Boy counterpart for being a point-and-click adventure instead of just being a series of minigames, and also a lot sillier. Barbie plans to find a treasure under the ocean when suddenly this Captain Barnacle dude shows up to immediately belittle her and beat her to the punch. It's a crime that the Game Boy port cuts out Captain Barnacle. He's trying to claim the treasure because it was lost by his great-great-grandfather, but Barbie wants to use the treasure to help the sea life. Although it's never actually actually stated how Barbie finding the treasure first will help the sea creatures. Of course, everything goes right for Barbie, and everything wrong happens to Barnacle, with him falling through floors, getting inexplicably trapped, or even electrocuted. Of course, he deserves it the whole time. The ending gets real silly when they find the treasure and a disembodied voice shows up to tell them that it's the ocean's treasure. This treasure belongs to the sea and all of its creatures. But Barbie makes a rainbow using a flashlight and a crystal, and the voice thinks it's dope enough to hand the whole thing over to Barbie. There's a lot more fun than the Game Boy version but significantly shorter and would have been a lot shorter if we didn't spend most of the time not knowing where the hell we were supposed to go. The final area of the game kinda looks like Rapture from Bioshock with its art deco vibes. Even though we don't get to watch a big daddy totally annihilate Captain Barnacle, the ending is still pretty satisfying as we see Barbie's dolphin pal Sandy torturing this man by dragging him around in a boat. Too bad you couldn't make a rainbow Captain Barnacle. Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus PC version. This is a point and click adventure that has Barbie running, flying, and ice skating around a 3D environment. The animations of flying around on your Pegasus were pretty cool. Unfortunately, the excitement ended quickly. The art and story is good though as you try to transform this Pegasus back into your long lost sister, but a lot of the puzzles can be pretty lame. Like this one where you're stepping on a button displayed at the top of the screen. Not sure how that's a challenge for anyone at any age. The skating and horse controls were a little cumbersome, and we only ever got to move through the environment for about 10 seconds before being met with a cutscene. The developers decided that young players were too dumb to find their way through the environment themselves, I guess. Even though the path is pretty straightforward. Many of the challenges are pointless matching or puzzle games. The puzzle where Barbie has to find her way around a giant's kitchen was pretty cool, and had me wishing more of the game was like that. The game sort of follows the plot of the movie, but cuts Ken's character from the film, perhaps in an attempt to give Barbie more agency in saving the day herself. The final boss is pretty cool and that it's an actual boss battle where you have to time your wand just right to reflect the bad guy's energy back onto him and turn him into a cat. It's a pretty cool boss battle for a Barbie game that unfortunately lasts all of one minute.
Barbie, Game Girl. The premise of this game is that you are finding pieces to an outfit for your date with Ken, or so I read online after we played the game, as it didn't do a good job of explaining what the hell was happening before dropping Barbie into all of these levels. Game Girl is essentially the handheld version of Barbie on the NES and DOS, but significantly better in every way, except it makes even less sense because it doesn't have the dream explanation at the beginning. We actually played this one before the other version, so we're even more thrown off about what the hell was going on. Knowing that everything is supposed to be a dream from the NES version doesn't make all of these flying inanimate objects who all want to kill Barbie any less terrifying. It seems that Barbie isn't just dreaming, she's having a nightmare fueled by anxiety. Like one of those dreams where all of your teeth fall out. It makes me wonder, is Barbie okay? It flows pretty well, though just as the game was really starting to get challenging and I was expecting some sort of final sequence, it sort of just randomly cut to Barbie and Ken dancing. It's a nice animation, and while I think girls would have enjoyed it with other Game Boy games in their collection, I think another couple of levels could have made it one of the better early Game Boy platformers. The final area in Barbie's closet with a bunch of doors that teleport you to other random areas of the closet until you locate the exit, all while dodging evil lipstick into pace, seems more fitting for a horror movie than a Barbie game. Barbie Team Gymnastics Team Gymnastics is a pretty solid quick time event based game where you rapidly press buttons in sequence as they flash on screen, which provides a decent challenge as you try to watch the nicely animated cutscenes. There's a few times this comes together really well. You compete in tournaments and unlock an impressive assortment of moves. I love how the controls and rules of the game are accurate to real life gymnastics with timing of moves being important to doing a routine correctly, and the routines needing to follow a certain order and contain a number of connecting and dance elements. You really could pull off a Biles 2 or a Chang in this game. Unfortunately, you just wouldn't get to see it, as the button prompts are located so far on the side of the screen that you can't watch your gymnast as she performs. Not being able to watch the routine kinda defeats the point of a gymnastics game. Had I been able to see my routine as I was playing the game, it would have been a lot more enjoyable and immersive. Also unlike the real sport, there's no music in this game. A true disappointment because music is a big part of a floor routine. It's strange to see a Barbie game that actually did some research and it feels like a pretty decent simulation of gymnastics that I think players would have enjoyed at the time. Barbie Race and Ride I was surprised this was a PlayStation game that wasn't a 3D game, but rather a first-person game that uses nice pre-rendered cutscenes, as kind of a spin-off of Barbie Riding Club that came out the year before on PC. Both games are the best of the horse riding titles for their immersive, impressive execution. I really like that you ride the horses in first person, which makes the game more immersive than watching Barbie in the third person. However, the actual racing part isn't in first person, which is a missed opportunity. There's a lot to stop and do out with your horse on the trails, and thankfully, these diversions are not as monotonous as some of the other Barbie horse games. The only problem is, most of the things we stop for aren't mini games, but just clicking on different animals to reveal some sort of animation. The ride is relaxing though, and there's a little more of a vibe to the lonely and shadowy atmosphere on the trails, which all have day and night alternates. You can ride down the whole trail in one sitting while doing a bunch of random shit on the sides. It's short and simple, but kind of effective. Barbie Horse Adventures Mystery Ride Barbie sets off across a barren landscape in search of her friend Teresa's missing horse, which has a strange mysterious feel during gameplay as there's no music during most of it, with only distant crow sounds in the background. It kind of felt like Barbie was transported to some sort of strange world made up of liminal spaces where she was the only person in sight. Of course, this is just the product of a sparsely made game, and the adventure itself isn't mysterious or very long, as Barbie traverses a handful of environments that stretch around the perimeter of the horse camp that's apparently both a canyon and a forest. It was relaxing though, almost like the quieter moments of walking around Red Dead, except with absolutely no stakes whatsoever and broken up by kind of okay minigames. That peaceful vibe was ruined though by this scary as hell glitch that happened near the end of the game. Not exactly a game breaking glitch or anything, but it looks so awful I couldn't concentrate on anything else. It looks like some sort of Cronenberg level body horror nightmare. Just imagine being a child if you suddenly saw Barbie's face try to escape from her head just to creepily stare back at you. I've been waiting years for someone to submit a creepy discovery in a Barbie game, so I was so excited when we found one for ourselves. It's cool how this game combines a mystery game with a horse game, which are two of the better types of Barbie games, if you don't count Blue Ribbon Race. Riding around on your horse to find clues is fun, and you have a set of tools like a metal detector and a slingshot, but the game could have been more exciting by utilizing them more. I also disliked how catching the culprit who stole Teresa's horse is just as simple as picking them out from a lineup, and it's a character who you've never met during the game. 
Part of the excitement of mystery games is chasing down the crook and hearing their cheesy last words. Not adding a sequence where you chase down the culprit on your horse is another missed opportunity. Barbie Magic Genie Bottle and CD. Barbie Magic Genie Bottle and CD came with an actual bottle that you use when you play the game. And I gotta say, it gets points for me because the Genie Bottle's pretty lit. It's not super utilized in the game, as it only lets you lift objects off the ground or makes Barbie appear on screen. But it is pretty snazzy. And I can see how kids be excited to play this just based on getting to play with the toy alone. It's cool how the bottle is decked out in these rhinestones that light up when you use the bottle, which is a pretty neat concept even if there's not much you can do with the bottle in the game. I think it would have been cooler if the bottle was also a joystick or something that you could use to fly around. The game itself is way better than the Game Boy version. As you fly around in first person with Barbie, put her back in the bottle if her magic sound effects are driving you nuts, like they were for me. You have to find randomly placed objects in each location to progress through four locations to get back at a couple that stole Barbie's lamps. Ironically, they show up as characters that ask you for help retrieving some items and assist you in your quest. But as soon as Barbie gains her powers back, she forgets about that and banishes them for eternity in cages of light so they'll think on their actions. It's one of the most brutal moves Barbie pulls off in any of these games, and for that and the pretty cool magic genie bottle, it's not too bad, even if it mostly relies on random generation to pad things out. Barbie Sparkling Ice Show. This is kind of a rhythm game and looks like a stripped down version of DJ Hero. You have to keep the skater center while matching the speed level to the coordinating color of the line. Then hidden space at just the right time on the snowflake so she can perform a trick. It's actually kind of challenging. If it had more snowflakes and sped up just a little bit more, this could have been a pretty solid game. The movement is smooth and the music in this title is slamming. And then there's this track. Now why does that sound familiar? Holy shit, why is it going so hard? I was also very excited for this game, because I'm also a huge fan of figure skating. This game improves everywhere Team Gymnastics didn't stick the landing. We played on the hardest of three difficulties, so I can imagine kids in a range of ages would enjoy this game. The controls of adjusting your speed, position, and timing of the jumps mimic the challenges of figure skating. The game also has the best outfit choices out of any of the Barbie games we've played, which is fitting for a game about a sport I watch partly for the costumes. After you complete the game, it gives you the ability to use all the moves you learn and assets you've unlocked to put on your own custom routine, which also unlocks a mode where you can play it back and forth and record your own video while being able to control the camera. It's a good final reward and if the difficulty didn't bottleneck towards the end of the game, we might have had a good contender for a Barbie game in the esports arena. What I'd really like to ask though, is how Barbie and her friends can be ice skating on a tropical island? Barbie Horse Adventures Riding Camp, PC, PlayStation 2, and Wii version. If you ever wanted to see what it looked like if Rockstar made a Barbie game, this is probably the closest we're going to get. In fact, since this is an Activision title, it kind of looks like it uses the Tony Hawk American Wasteland engine. Of course, it's not anywhere near as exciting as those titles, but it is a nice open world game on a single island with smooth controls, making it a godsend from the other horse adventure games. Racing the horses and learning new jumps is pretty fun, so I can see young players really enjoying this game and repeating courses to improve their times and unlock new quests. I also had a pretty fun time riding around to complete all the quests, even if they didn't lead anywhere. It really bugged me that this game didn't have a controllable camera, which made moving and looking around the environments difficult at times. There is a lot to do though and find on the island, with small moments of mystery involving finding objects related to your teacher's relative who left the country decades ago, but ultimately doesn't go anywhere. In fact, despite all the game mechanics being solid, nothing eventful happens through the entire adventure. Barbie and the 12 Dancing Princesses, PlayStation 2 and PC version. 12 Dancing Princesses begins with the worst pre-rendered cutscene of any of these games, with Resident Evil 1 level voice acting so bad it instantly had us break into laughter. And if I could remember where I lost the glass vial, then we could use it to collect the mystical water. Despite this, they actually tried with this one. It's pretty smooth even though the challenge is non-existent and the level design is overly simple. The lack of pressure with zero enemies or a life system makes it feel like an early predecessor in today's wholesome game movement. Each of the levels ends with finding a princess, who in a very your princess is in another castle way tells you that you didn't find the elixir for your sick father. Of course that doesn't matter as it's time to get down. For some reason, instead of doing ballet like in the movie, it's some sort of disco funk dad moves hybrid. Each sister at least gets unique moves and music, and the game allows the player to customize the routine. 
At the end, Barbie says screw the other sisters and goes searching for the elixir herself for a single level. This level is how the whole game should have been, with some somewhat interesting level design. The game ends with a fireworks show, which feels like it could have been an impressive way to show off the PlayStation 2's lighting effects back in 2000. The problem is this game was released in 2006, as one of the last games before the PlayStation 3 came out, and I'm pretty sure it's nearly as unimpressive then as it was now, no matter your age. I would have rather watched all of the sisters dance together than watch this fireworks show that may as well have been a pre-rendered cutscene. <laughs> Love is for weaklings like you and your sisters! Barbie Pet Rescue PC version. After playing the awful Game Boy title, I didn't have high hopes this game wouldn't be more dog shit, but I was pleasantly surprised that this one's pretty good. Barbie and her sister Stacy hang out at the animal care facility where you can play mini games with the animals while you wait for the next phone call, which are pretty well done time killers while not completing the main story. Except the turtle racing game. That one was as slow and boring as it suggests. Once Barbie gets the call, she visits a handful of locations where she has to rescue each animal by completing a traditional point and click type puzzle, which I actually thought were clever, often and involving quick timing in the environment. This one serves as a possible entry point for girls getting into more games like these, like Sanitarium or Harvester. I got excited each time there was a new call about a pet to be rescued, because then we get to go solve a new puzzle. I like how this game doesn't treat players like they're stupid, it actually gives them some puzzles that they will feel a sense of accomplishment after completing. There's even an overarching thread here as Barbie notices carnival items across each scene, eventually leading to a finale where she finds a loose monkey on a playground. I would have ranked this game higher if we got to go to the carnival Barbie uncovers with the clues. Instead, Barbie just discovers that the monkey must belong at the carnival and moves on. The game got me all excited for nothing. The final puzzle was pretty good. It took us a little bit to figure out where to tell the dog to wait so we could corner the monkey. As we watched the monkey surrender before the canine, only to give in into an embrace as a gesture of choosing the only option of being friend over foe. More of these games would have fared better with me if they also ended with a monkey hugging the dog. Detective Barbie The Mystery Cruise The Detective Barbie games are some of the better Barbie games, but the final in the series, The Mystery Cruise on PlayStation, is unfortunately not the strongest. For a Barbie game, it's still really good, with randomized clues and suspects that change every game and immersive and fun tools to explore the environment with. It's definitely a true point-click adventure game, and The Mystery Cruise delivers with the mechanics I think would make kids excited to solve the mystery. The ship, though, is very lonely, hard to navigate with not a lot to do, with almost no music. It feels so sterile and static, it can slowly drive you insane. It's fun walking around the cruise ship to find clues to lead you to the thief who stole the missing pieces from the art gallery. I just think it would be more fun if there was some music playing in the game. Walking around the detective music just makes you feel more badass. The mini games to help you accomplish tasks are not fun. At least we got some infrared lipstick to search for fingerprints and get to dust and scan them. That's pretty immersive and probably makes young players feel like they really are part of the mystery. It does end with a chase sequence though when Barbie transforms into a badass action hero. Ending a Barbie game with a chase sequence elevates these games well above the others, but as the third game in the series and the first game that could have utilized the PlayStation hardware, it doesn't really live up to the heights of the other two games in the series. Barbie Riding Club. This was the first title we played with the interactive pre-rendered video, so I was pretty surprised when I realized you can control the horse. It's pretty impressive tech for 1998, and maybe it would be impressive today if the video wasn't compressed to hell. You might initially think your PC is lagging and can't keep up with the video on screen, but in actuality, the video normally runs at probably less than 30 frames per second. And when you decrease the speed of the horse, it adjusts the frame rate of the video, so it can drop down to like 5 frames a second. So the game looks better when you speed the horse up, but then that makes things easier to miss. I love riding the Barbie horses in first person. It really does make me feel like I'm actually on a horse. I also like that there were lots of missions to do and they weren't just basic things like running through flags or something. It's more of a point and click where you travel by horseback. Finding clues at the locations Barbie tells you to travel to, even if the puzzles are simple and unchallenging. The game keeps things interesting with lots of missions and secret paths as Barbie rummages through what remains of a dead family that lived on the island years ago in search of a rumored wild horse. The game is tranquil, flows nicely with fair amount of content, and the late 90s nostalgic visuals kinda hit hard. The ending was nice but lackluster compared to many of the other titles. Either way, I think this is a game that children wouldn't have just been satisfied with but probably even excited to play. Detective Barbie 2 The Vacation Mystery Detective Barbie 2's install screen begins with a hilariously bad song that thankfully doesn't appear during the game. That's how I knew this was going to be a great game, because everyone knows a good detective should have their own theme song. 
If you're looking for a Nancy Drew style point and click, this game would make you happy as there are secret passageways and a fair amount of challenge with the puzzles. The game itself is a solid mystery adventure looking for a stolen treasure around a hotel that's a true adventure game just like the others. It's surprisingly good, where the items, clues, and suspects are randomly generated with multiple endings to keep things fresh, broken up by exciting extreme sports activities, and once again plays up Barbie as a badass. Catching the crook is pretty fun, as you must first scope them out from the lighthouse tower, and then chase them down by boat, ATV, or even a hang glider. However, the racing, particularly on the ATV, is way too difficult, taking out a lot of the fun when it halts you to a complete stop every couple of seconds. Overall, it's a more than satisfactory sequel to the original that fans would be sure to love, which is mostly hurt by a number of game-breaking bugs that cause us to restart more than once. Not fun. She'll find the way before you fall. Barbie as the Princess and the Popper. Game Boy Advance version. Unlike its PC counterpart, Barbie as the Princess and the Popper on the Game Boy Advance is a fairly good game. This is similar to a game I used to love when I was younger called The Lost Vikings, where you switch between characters with different abilities one at a time in order to navigate through the puzzle platform environment. It doesn't get as creatively complex as the original Lost Vikings, but it's a more child-friendly recreation and legitimately challenges the player to think about how to get through the environment. I like that the game lets you play as both Annalise and Erica, and also their cats, and that each character has their own special abilities. This made switching between them to solve puzzles fun, but it ended up getting old. It seems that rather than taking the effort to design more levels with different environments and new challenges, the developers instead just made each of the four levels super long. The princesses move way too slow and the levels are way too big. There's no life system, but if you run out of health as any character, you have to restart all the way from the beginning of the level. And while all of your progress remains, it takes a really freaking long time to get back to where you were. If you do get to the end, the final sequence is maybe the most satisfying ending in any of these games, with a pretty epic final battle in a tower that utilizes all the characters' abilities, taking down the villain in an epic crumbling collapse. The game does a good job of showing kids that everyone has their own special talents and that it's important to work together. It's not at all how the movie ends from what I understand, but if it did, it probably would have been pretty baller. Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus Game Boy Advance version. Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus on Game Boy Advance is essentially a reskin of the Princess and Popper on the GBA, but instead of switching between characters, you're switching between different wands as you unfreeze characters that are frozen in place by a powerful wizard who wants you to marry him. Though very rarely do the locations where the civilians apparently froze in place make any sense. The levels are thankfully shorter and easier to navigate than the Princess and the Popper, and rather than being a strategic environmental puzzler, this one feels more like a straight platformer, which I think works better for the younger audience. The environments are pretty cool, and the Wand of Light gives you a new ability in every level, which gives variety to the puzzle solving, and made the game pretty fun. The biggest thing I give this one is the boss looks cool as f and there's several trippy effects that were surprisingly psychedelic for a Barbie game. The boss battles never fit the level of epicness of the ending of Princess the Popper, jumping on the same chandelier over and over to get to drop down and get some hits on the boss, which apparently he bought a couple for his lair as well. Having been defeated by the same ceiling ornament before, you think you get a different interior designer. The Pegasus doesn't seem to do anything, which is disappointing, as it was fun to fly around on her in the PC version. I also don't see the point of Brietta asking Annika to turn her into the Pegasus at the beginning so she can help her get around the game, just to disappoint me by not using this game mechanic. I also find it funny that the entire plot of this game is just fighting off the advances of a man you're clearly not interested in, and then in the end, he's defeated by finally realizing Barbie's just not that into him. If only we all had a wand of light, it would just make those real life puzzles a little easier. The Barbie Diaries, High School Mystery, PC version. If you can get past the corny voice acting and dialogue, which I was barely able to, so I don't blame you if you can't, this is a good game. Barbie's reimagined here as a high school socialite who loves to rock while also being the school reporter in what almost feels reminiscent of the early moments of Life is Strange. The game, though, is actually a gossip simulator, as you smooth with multiple characters by trying to charm them as much as possible, always with ulterior motives of getting information for them from other people, trying to manipulate others into liking you before they end up spilling the tea. It works surprisingly well, and some stuff is being said here about what it means to be a popular girl in high school. Of course, Barbie desires to impress the mean girls, but at one point she even tries to partner 
partner was at school Brainiac, who initially doesn't take Barbie seriously because she's a woman. I didn't know girls had senses of humor. And Barbie definitely tries to be funny, with a dad joke ready for every conversation. But I'm not gonna pretend it didn't make me chuckle once or twice for their sheer corniness. I'm so not a sports fan. I thought a quarterback was a refund. That was a humdinger. And I was surprised at the places the humor would go, such as the stereotype of the aggressive high school coach or even a couple of fourth wall breaks. Neil's way into video games. He'd probably like playing this one. The mystery at the center is that someone trashes Barbie's stage before her show. And at one point in the adventure, she learns to hack computers from the nerd character, which features some Matrix-inspired acid breaks. And at another point, she has a falling out when she accuses her bandmate of having her own reasons to sabotage the show. While the game is primarily dialogue puzzles, there are a fair amount of stealth missions, which were pretty cool for a Barbie game. The ending was predictable, while not entirely predictable, but overall, I was surprised by the themes and humor of this game that none of the other games had. However, I feel that the game misinterprets Barbie's character. From all the other games that we've played in the other installments in the Barbie universe, it's apparent that she is an Elle Woods type kind popular girl who's very wholesome and just wants to help others. So I don't think she'd enjoy gossiping or manipulating others. Barbie and the 12 Dancing Princesses, Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS version. 12 Dancing Princesses on Game Boy Advance is yet another reskin of Princess and the Popper and Magic of Pegasus, and this one improves on all the flaws of the other two. The levels start off pretty boring, but get more interesting when Barbie finds each of her sisters and they give her an item that helps her reach new areas. There's much more verticality to the platforming, and the special items are fun and unique. The game takes the environmental character puzzle design of Princess and the Popper and combines it with the more straightforward puzzle platform design of Magic of Pegasus, except this time with better flowing levels and a nice amount of bosses to break up the action. The levels are long, but the characters get through them quickly, and there's a fair amount of fast puzzle solving and some interesting moments that I think would have made this a satisfying purchase for kids looking to play an adventure on their Game Boy Advance. I was surprised that this game had some puzzles that took us a while to solve, even though we were playing on the easy mode with unlimited lives. I also give the game props for this trippy final level, where everything is reflected in mirrors and you have to figure out how to progress by looking at the reflection. I've never seen that done in any game before. The ending boss fight, while fun, was maybe the worst boss fight of the three games. But if the boss fight was more epic, we would have had the strongest of any of the Game Boy Advance games. But unfortunately for 12 Dancing Princesses, that title still belongs to another game. Detective Barbie and the Mystery of the Carnival Caper The first Detective Barbie is definitely the best in the series, with actual stakes to its premise as Ken vanishes during a magic show along with a briefcase that has some serious moolah in it. Fortunately, Barbie already has an established detective agency before the game begins, and explores the carnival grounds during its after hours, which makes for a great point-and-click adventure game setting with some at times creepy and lonely atmosphere, and a large and detailed environment that Barbie actually has the ability of exploring and interacting with. And you truly don't know what to expect, as like the other games in the series, each clue and suspect is randomized. What impressed me the most though was this one had a lot of good story beats with some execution that's actually quite good. Barbie is smart and leads the adventure with her on-brand positivity as she encounters an array of mystery movie archetypes, with the snooty magician who's only concerned with the newfound attention thanks to Ken's disappearance, the privileged but troubled carnival owner's son, or the strange groundkeeper who doesn't communicate well with other human beings. And there were a few moments that hit pretty hard. I loved riding the ferris wheel and being able to see the suspect run around on the ground below. Honestly, it was pretty chilling. And later, you can see the shadowy figure in the distance of the entrance of a randomized ride, which turns into a full action sequence as you have to chase the mystery figure while navigating through the ride as quickly as possible. I'm not sure who would hop on a ride that just goes in circles to land them right back where they started while they're trying to evade a crime scene. The chase sequences are pretty fun and action-packed, and Barbie moves unnaturally slow, so we get to do a few of them. These sequences were great and got me excited, which wasn't something that happened very often through this video. This was the first game that made me realize Barbie works great as a badass action hero. The only thing that hurt the title is the navigation was a little wonky at times, and thanks to the randomization of everything, it can be pretty hard, as we got stuck when we couldn't find whatever this was supposed to be on the horse statue. If it had two whole ass adults stumped, it may have been too hard for children, so a hint feature probably probably would have been a nice thing to add for younger players. I expected that among 56 games, one of them could be a pretty decent point and click adventure, and I think this one fits the bill. This was a pretty enjoyable game that never treats players like they are stupid just because they are little girls. It gives them a good mystery game with endless replay value. No wonder this was one of the best selling PC games of 1998.
Barbie and the Three Musketeers. Each of the Barbie movie games developed by WayForward on handheld progressively improved on the last, getting rid of things with each game like crazy backtracking and streamlining character switching on the fly. Barbie and the Three Musketeers combines everything good from the last games to make by far the best game of them all. While at no point are any of the Musketeers armed with a musket, the game does add combat to the formula, which makes this game a lot better than the others, as Barbie and pals, if need be, will full on murder a man if they have to. Being able to switch between the characters at any time as you unlock them ensures that there is never a dull moment. Not only does each musketeer have her own special ability to help solve puzzles, they also have a unique defense tactic. Both come in handy when facing obstacles and enemies. You also have this cute kitten who you can switch to for squeezing into tight places to hit buttons that control platforms. The boss fights are better than ever, the puzzles are clever, and it really resembles something like a Castlevania at times. I like that the game makes equal use of all your abilities once they're unlocked. There are no characters that you forget about because they're rarely used. It heavily underutilizes its addition of motion controls, especially on Wii when it's only used a handful of times to open some doors. It feels like it could have utilized newer technologies to freshen up a 2009 game with a game engine from as far back as 2004. But as far as the game goes, Three Musketeers is easily one of the most satisfying when it comes to being an actual game. Even more than The Princess and the Popper, the game emphasizes that everyone has unique abilities, and you can accomplish more by working together. And the game makes all of the characters look equally as badass when using their abilities. Secret Agent Barbie. Well, after making the Metal Gear Barbie joke in this video, it turns out there really is a game that completely fits that title. For me, Secret Agent Barbie really gets a lot right. I love spies as a kid, and Secret Agent Barbie fully commits to Barbie being a badass action hero, which I think works best for a video game. The game lifts heavily from Metal Gear Solid, which of course is stealing from the best, basically being a violence-free adaptation that still captures a large portion of the mechanics, which works perfectly for a Barbie game. The stealth mechanics are great and smooth and the secret agent vibe is perfectly captured, with Barbie suffocating guards with her compact makeup and misleading them away from the scene with her robot Dot. I need to find out what kind of setting powder she uses, because I'd love to be able to take out guards with my makeup. Of course, Barbie's friend Becky is the one who made all these gadgets, so she's a badass as well, at one point even putting Barbie into this augmented reality environment to test out some new gadgets. While in the Detective Barbie games, Becky is a computer whiz scanning items and giving out some pretty simple information. I'd say this is a ticket. In the Secret Agent games, Becky is a full-on tech genius who could have her own spin-off title. The cool Y2K aesthetic really captures that groovy 70s espionage vibe, with some killer music that mixes breakbeat, downtempo, and trip-hop sounds together at appropriate times based on which outfit you're wearing, which also coordinates to whether you're in walking stealth or chase mode. I also love that this game could have served as a gateway for young players to get into more serious action games. Although switching in between game modes with the line, I had the perfect outfit, would probably feel out of place if Snake said it in Metal Gear Solid. It works for a Barbie game. The game is a lot of fun, and you can get into a nice rhythm where you're stealthing around listening to the smooth beats, which transition into louder remixes of the occasional action chase that at times sounds like something composed by the propeller heads. My only problem is this game could have relied on the stealth and action sequences more. I think that should have been the whole game, but instead there's a fair bit of walking around figuring out where to go and solving the occasional puzzle. The last sequence in the layer is a prolonged series of extended stealth sequences, and while I was playing that, I couldn't help but think that if this was the whole game, it would have been the perfect Barbie title. That said, the story has a lot of twists, but not the best ending. Only one other game on this list beats Secret Agent Barbie in terms of the non-stop action fun factor. I loved watching all of the action sequences play out, and the twists that the villain threw at Barbie along the way. It made the game feel like more of a spy thriller. But I thought the ending was pretty stupid, where after all the chasing and action, the villain just basically gives up and says something like, You win, Barbie! I feel like the game would have been a perfect title if we just had a more satisfying end result from our villain. Metal Gear Solid 6. I mean, Secret Agent Barbie. When so many Barbie games barely fit the meaning of the word game, it's shocking knowing that Secret Agent Barbie Royal Jewel's Mission is not just a good game, but also one of the best stealth games on a Game Boy system. And I say that as someone whose favorite Game Boy game is Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babble. This is the only game that seems to truly stick to Barbie being a badass all the way through. You go from London to China to Italy to Mexico to chase down the evil Camille. There's never a dull moment, with non-stop action as Barbie sneaks her way across the world to infiltrate layers without getting caught. The whole thing flows nicely thanks in part to the smart level design and multiple stealth mechanics that keep the adventure fresh the whole way through as Barbie acrobats, rolls, and slingshots herself through all kinds of corridors without being noticed. Which is something I wasn't expecting after every other Game Boy Advance game we played had 
very long, monotonous levels. If you're caught too many times, you simply restart the map, but the game gives you lots of great ways of sneaking through the levels. With a pocket mirror that works as a smoke canister, or a robotic dog you can use to lure enemies away that's utilized way more heavily than the PC version, which is always broken up by a rather fun chase sequence on the back of a random vehicle that isn't in the PC game. You can even unlock an expert mode at the end, though it seems kind of pointless because there doesn't seem to be anything to unlock any further. The unlockables themselves are fun to collect by finding all the CDs in each level, but I can't believe I'm saying this. It didn't have enough interesting outfits. So while it's missing the mark there in terms of what I think a Barbie fan would have wanted, it gets everything else right in that it's a thoroughly fun game and doesn't treat Barbie fans like immature children undeserving of a real title, delivering an authentic experience that stands up to any other stealth title on the Game Boy. It makes me wish Konami would add a confetti cannon compact mirror or guard distracting robot dog to the next Metal Gear Solid installment. The only thing that stops this game from getting a perfect score is that it was a little short. Well, it turns out, after 56 games, there's some good ones. Though we did have to suffer through a massive amount of horrendous ones to get there. A common thread with the better games seemed to be that the developers figured out Barbie works best when you portray her as just a straight badass. And that made me realize, if more games treated Barbie as an action hero, she'd probably be known as a bigger gaming icon. The fact is, Barbie might be the biggest leading lady in all of gaming, as I can't think of another female character who starred in nearly 60 different games. And frankly, she deserves better. But I do give credit to the developers who took Barbie and focused on the fact she could do anything in a badass way, instead of just always making her a ditzy girl obsessed with fashion. I think doing this project gave me more appreciation for Barbie as a character. I always saw Barbie as just a symbol or a character, which the Barbie movie seems to be pushing as well, as far as I can tell from the previews. But in the games, there's a lot of consistency to her character that I'm guessing that maybe Mattel pushed on the developers, as a few of the games seem to really push that Barbie's just a young, positive girl who accomplishes her goals by staying calm, confident, and smart, and ready to tackle whatever problem comes her way. I actually thought she was kind of realistic as a teenage girl with very high ideals about the world, who relies on the support system of the friendship she's built to accomplish any obstacle in front of her, instead of just being the ridiculous bubbly stereotype that she's normally known for. I still don't know if the movie version treats the character with the same level of respect, or if she'll be more of a stereotype, but from the trailers, it's looking like the latter. I can say with confidence that although Barbie has done a lot for girls when it comes to video games, I can confirm the movie is going to be a lot more fun than playing the majority of her games. Well, if you ever wanted to know if there's a good Barbie game, now you can say you know. There's about three. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. 56 Games was not an easy project, nor was it cheap, but it certainly was a lot of fun. Please be sure to subscribe because it really goes a long way in supporting this content. Shout out to Angel the Fox, Ash Photography, Bitwiff27, Chad Biscuit, Ed Moffat, Eddie Talkspin the Bleach Primid, Flex, Fox M Cloud 123, J1221J, Miss Arctic Foxy, Phoenix157, Rackman22, Red Team Medic, Riley S, Robert Eisenman, Roll Got Me Fuel. Starcore 2, Terran Stock, Towerizer, and Child Z for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.